Welcome to MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norma Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Noodles, the official food of Winneapolis? I demand to know what type. Is it ramen? Is it pasta? Inquiring minds want to know. Is there any difference? Because I thought pasta was pasta and noodles are noodles? Um, I might actually be thinking more of pho. Mm. Rice noodles. Uh, I want pho now. <laughs> Aha! I've implanted the idea. Yay! Inception! I've been wanting pho for a long time, but I haven't had the time to make it. Well, you guys would love Asia. We have all the noodles you want. And also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. I want pho! Give me pho! What about Tido? What? I don't know Tido. Tido! <laughs> Uh, so um, I'm gonna uh, look up my local noodle bar <laughs> in order to see if there's any pho on his menu. <laughs> While you do that, I am going to introduce what we're going to review today. So in today's episode, we are going to review season seven, episode eighteen, Daring Done. In this episode, Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie go on a mission to find out. If A.K. Yerding is retiring from writing books. Dun, dun, dun. So before we officially start, let's we'll give our first opinion. And Silver, what do you think, man? This one was a little bit of a meh for me. Hmm. I mean, it starts with this premise that Daring Dunn, this, in, this determined, intrepid adventurer, is now wanting to hang up shop because people don't like her. The popularity contest has, has swung. And given all the some of the rigmarole that's been going on online, this is perhaps enhancing my reaction. <laughs> Having people mad at you is unfortunate, but it shouldn't determine your what you want to do. If you still love doing something, don't give it up. Unless it's hurting other people, in which case, yes. Give it up. <laughs> Yes, if you're actively hurting other people, I'd say, uh, yeah, You, if you enjoy that, you're a sadist. <laughs> Here's the thing. As far as I know, Yearling doesn't believe she's directly hurt anyone. It's just they're mad at her. Okay, we'll talk about this more. I'm, I'm looking through the transcript trying to remember all of Yearling's uh, actions. But she's not being proactive in trying to fix the damage. It's more, oh, woe is me. Mm, true that. Poor me. True that, true that. I felt like this is not the daring do we've witnessed thus far couple that with some somewhat forced plot points and i'm just like eh, i'm not really feeling it even the legend of one of the pillars of equestria had some moments where i just sort of scratched my head is like why not eat her <laughs> you can do that you know you're big in a size proportional way it's not a oh joke God. of your weight <laughs> get together with aeon of dreams sometimes <laughs> oh boys but anywho he's been eaten before <laughs> exactly Oh, gosh. Uh, so, more details as events warrant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, Seppi, what about you? What do you think about this episode? The only thing I remembered, because nobody will stop making fan art of this character, was the pillar. Except I didn't know she was a pillar up until the season finale, because I did not keep track of anything. Ah, okay. I don't know. Season 7 and in general for me it was just one and done episodes and then it's like oh this episode's over i don't care anymore Oof, that bad eh no uh, it's it's not really a bad thing i don't know if it's just mostly my motivation for the show dying at that point up until the season finale where it's like okay i'll watch you more all right all right, all right. and as for me i thought rainbow dash was overreacting much she was really trying to push Daring Do, make her seem like the face, but nobody was really buying it, like Seth Rollin in WWE. But still, um, I don't know. This episode was okay. It was enjoyable at points. And how do I put this? It didn't really pull me in. It didn't really stay my interest. It was... Like Sappy said, a one and done. But I do like the pillar, uh, Sonambula. She was kind of interesting. And I do have to point out that these ponies are from the UAE, uh, United, United Arab Emirates. Like they're from Egypt and whatnot. 
the Middle East? No, not Middle East. Are, is it Middle East? Uh, no. Uh, Egypt is in Africa. Part around there, yeah. So also like part of Dubai or somewhat like it's around there. Like if you notice, they have pyramids and whatnot. So I do like that we're getting a lot of world building of this one. Um, the previous pillar episodes or the previous legend episodes, we got people from Vikings or something like that. We got Viking ponies. We got um, Oriental ponies. We got um, Roman ponies. So that is something cool. And now we got Egyptians and whatnot. So yay, that's really, really cool. But the implementation of it is a bit rush. And what Seppi said earlier does apply to this one. It felt rush so you don't have that impact but other than that this episode was fun and before we head on to the reviews i need to point something out because i forgot to mention it earlier on this episode is patron sponsored by starstream he has been waiting for a long time and we are reviewing one of the legends of magic's um well quote unquote comics and whatnot because this is related to legends so yay this is something awesome to talk about so anywho if you guys have not watched this episode please go do watch it it's a fun watch and you'll understand why we feel the way we feel welcome back so we start off the episode rather calmly at ponyville where pinkie pie just bought a paper a newspaper to be exact and was reading the you know highlights about stuff that's been going on around Equestria. Yes, the, the new shrubbery in the castle gardens provided by the knights who say, me! <laughs> oh, and also noodles being the official food of Winneapolis? I, I still need to know, is it rice? Is it uh, standard pasta? Is it wheat? You've got to set a public image. Weed is the healthier, but let's be honest, we all want to go for that carbolicious pasta. Oh, true, true. But hey, um, judging by the article... I want hot pot. <laughs> what, what, no? I want hot pot. Hot pot. Oh, God. But anyway, but judging by the picture, it looks oriental, so it could be Asian. So it could be uh, rice noodles? I, I don't know, because we here have names for our noodles. I, I got no idea what you call you. Them at your site, so eh. I call we my have noodles different Billy. types of noodles. We have lo mein noodles and there are rice noodles. Mm. I've had both. I, I personally prefer rice noodles. I call my noodles Billy. I have killed Billy many times. <laughs> what about Jimmy? Jimmy? Billy? I think Groom keeps ringing back from the dead. <laughs> oh. Now, we have a sandwich shop called Jimmy John's. I don't like it. Oh, I just love how we pull reference from all places and nobody gets what everybody's saying except for Sappy's with Grim Adventure. <laughs> oh, well, no. Grim, the Grim, Grim Adventure. Adventure was a popular show. Oh, yeah. But Double Dragon also a popular show too. Or game. <laughs> uh, but anywho, after... If y'all don't get the Billy and Mandy reference and y'all are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> don't call out and you're stupid. Uh, but anywho... After reading a snippet about how A.K. Erling is retiring, Rainbow Dash reacts and saying, Oh no, this is not good. Something's wrong. Let's go to A.K. Erling's um, cabin in the woods. Cabin in the woods? Yep, cabin in the woods. Oh, hey, I got that reference. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we get a stupid Chris Evans. Was it Thor? I forgot. I'd rather take a stroll night in the woods. Night <laughs> in the woods. Uh, that's a good one, too. But anywho, after our heroes arrive, Rainbow Dash keep knocking on the door, expecting A.K. Erling to open up and explain that, oh, this is all a misunderstanding and the Ponyville... What was it again? The Ponyville... I forgot. Chronicles, yes. Confidential? No, the Ponyville Chronicles mis, uh, took it as... or miswrote their articles and whatnot. But nah. She's inside, moping, feeling depressed as how Pinky is describing it. You know, I feel we'd be remiss if we didn't um, mention one thing. We we kind of overlooked one news story that was kind of, was kind of a big deal. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Parasprite infestation in Philadelphia eradicated. Oh. 
Think about that for a minute. One, that I believe that was cited in Swarm of the Century, Season 1. <laughs> They've only just now solved the problem. And notice their word choice. Eradicated. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have this image of Paris sprites popping like popcorn kernels. Oh, wow. And where was it again? Uh... Philadelphia. Philadelphia. No, it's not anywhere yeah. close to Manhattan. Wait, wait, wait. Remember that one called... Philadelphia is in the States. Of course it's not that close to you. <laughs> no, okay, I'm just, what I'm saying is, do you guys remember the one Luna Sprite comic that uh, Friends Forever issue? Yes. Wait, what's that one again? Luna. Luna, Luna, Luna. <laughs> I believe that was the 14th. But where was it um, played again? A Philly, was it? Or is it Maine? Philadelphia. Ah, yes. Now I know how they got destroyed. Yeah. They got... Just make the dragons. Mina, the great uh, Paris Bright Slayer. Yep. I think they got eradicated Vanquish. Uh, Vanguard players, you understand that one. But yes, um, Paris Sprites are gone. They have been eradicated. <laughs> so, anywho, <laughs> continuing on. A.K. Erling opens up and invites our hero in. And yes... She explains that uh, the article's not wrong. I quit because I'm feeling rather depressed. The people of Sunambula, was it? Yep, hmm. they named the town after. Right. The people of Sunambula do not like me because I am a menace. Oh, woe is me. It's time to hang up my cloak and whatnot because I am a menace. So, yes. Why do I get the feeling that this is all because of a J. Jonah Jameson <laughs> pony going, That dairy do is a menace! I want pictures of her. <laughs> pictures right now. Oh, oh god, I can see it. Didn't they? Didn't we had a J. Jonah pony? We did. Oh god, it's his fault. <sighs> it's like, curse your rarity. You destroy everything you touch. Oh, uh, get me pictures of rarity. Oh no. Oh what? Oh my! How forward? Mm. Are they? I just want to be hugged and loved and to be left alone. <laughs> Oh, boys. But anywho... You fiends. <laughs> uh, but anywho, our heroes then try to prove their Hindu wrong, saying that this is all a misunderstanding, and let's head to Sonambula and try to prove you wrong and see if the facts are right or wrong. Obviously, it's going to be wrong. Like, nobody hates their Hindu. So our hero travel all the way to... So Nambula, which is in the far eastern reaches of Equestria. Very far. It only took them a few frames. But they're there. And Rainbow Dash goes up to the first pony and asks him if he ever heard of Daring Do. And said pony says, oh yeah, I heard of Daring Do. She is a jerk. She broke my cart and didn't fix it. See, I was statue there. She broke it and she didn't even bother to fix it. And suddenly a cloak pony came in and talk about how she did all the bads like destroying carts doing bad stuff like this daring do is a menace get me pictures of daring do wow and this is where i have to correct myself uh i said in the initial opening you know unless you're hurting someone you should you shouldn't give up what you love well she is saying i hurt these folks and, uh, you know, I what does it see here? Wake of destruction, daring do ruins entire village marketplace. Dare or squ scare, local rogue daring do involves in frightful fiasco. Which, that's already misleading. Local rogue in implies that she spends all her time there. <laughs> daring do leads bull into pi China shop during high-speed chase. In some ways, it, it's kind of nice, the idea of daring do recognizing that uh, there are consequences to what she does. Mm -hmm. To quote Lord Vetinari of Discworld, heroes would often commit acts that in normal day society would be arrested. <laughs> so true. If you want to pull it down a notch in, through, in video game terms, think of Link. He breaks into people's house, break all their vases, and steal all their loot. What? Yeah, he does do that in Ocarina of Time especially. Mm -hmm, yeah. he's, a, he's a thief, but everybody thinks he's a hero. <laughs> uh, but yes... Most of the heroes here are, well, kind of jerks. They trample over the downtrot and do what they do. But still, uh, that's besides the point. Daring Do here you know, acknowledged her mistakes and feels bad about it. 
tell me if I'm overreacting here or you agree with me that the lesson here is a bit heavy handed. Well, let's see, heavy handed in like like the moral of the atoll story. The moral of the atonement story, because in the end, what Rainbow said was, "Yeah, you did the bad things, but you need to atone for them, and you need to kind of acknowledge it and do something about it." And one of those things were she broke the fruit pony's cart. Uh, she bought him a new one. She didn't pay for her bill in the uh, what you would call this inn that she was staying and she paid it with a bit of extra for the room that got destroyed and so on and good on good on her for at least making fixes on that but sometimes well sometimes there's unintentional consequences and the biggest thing is to learn to not do it again or learn from your mistakes and i don't know if she did that yeah but still but still let's continue on ahead daring do heard the well bad things about her and she let off Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie well don't really chase after her but they head into a inn where Daring Do always goes there when she travels and in said inn Pinkie Pie does all the talking and I have to say that Pinkie Pie really has a really sophisticated voice here Unfortunately for our heroes, the innkeeper is from Boston. Boston. Yep. <laughs> uh, sorry, Bostonites. I feel like I've insulted you. Uh, but still, uh, they talk about Daring Do, and said innkeeper says that, oh yeah, I know of her. She's a menace. She came in, didn't pay her bill, and the people that asked for her went into her room and trashed it. Like, oh, the jerk. Now, this is where a, a flag should go up. Daring Duke could, say, could just say, hey, I never stayed here. But she did. I never. Well, she did, but she she could also say, I did pay my bill. Did she? Well, I think yes. I mean, remember, remember, a lot of these acts are, well, we learned that a lot of these acts are falsehoods perpetrated by a certain stallion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Posing, even posing as daring do. Oh, true, true. It's a bit muddy here. Like, mm-hmm. the, the scenario here is really muddy. But the fact of the matter is, uh, said innkeeper does not like daring do. It's fair that you, you don't like someone if you think that they've skipped out on the check or failed to meet their obligations. But daring do would know if she'd skipped out on a on a bill. And I don't think she's... The kind of character that would do that. But at the same time, too, you have to think of an action adventure rare. Because you think about it, like Jones, Indiana Jones, when he's staying at his hotel, suddenly some hooligan comes up to his room, tries to fight him, they have a brawl, and he has to run. So he jumps out the window, lassos something to swing away from uh, the danger and fled off to safety. So, when in an action movie, we always get to see the hero's point of view and we carry along, but we never get to see what happens to set location. Just imagine this mayor or just imagine the innkeeper going up to the room, seeing what's the old commotion and suddenly finds out, oh God, no, look at this, all the damage and she didn't even pay the bill. Ah, you're tearing me apart, tearing do. Or we never stick around to see the hero go back and say, sorry about the mess, let me help pay for it. Indiana Jones and the insurance policy <laughs> filing. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. that's an adventure there. Now, uh, I'd like to quote uh, Terry Pratchett as I found the exact line on on heroes. Mm. You could say, I am a hero, so when I kill you, that makes you de facto the kind of person suitable to be killed by a hero. Mm. You could say that a hero, in short, is someone who indulges in every whim that, within the rule of the law, would have been behind bars swiftly, dancing what I believe is known as the hemp fandango. The words we might use are murder, pillage, theft, and rape. Oh, wow. And when you think about, you know, some heroes, yeah. 
Conan the Barbarian or Adventurer or whatever you want to call him, he um, he wasn't a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. So it is true that heroes, often we, we daydream about them, but we don't often consider the consequences of their actions. But at the same time, I just find that Daring Do's depression is the opposite of action. And as a pony who's been mostly defined by action, the fact that she's just sort of moping and calling it quits, it's like, what? What are you up to? Is this meant to be some sort of double play? Yeah, true, true. I, I can see that. I can see that. With this one, uh, I think why this one wasn't okay is because, well, some of the problems that we're trying to focus here now with Daring's personality here, like it's, it, would would it be okay for me to say out of character? Well, here's the one problem. We don't know Daring do all that well as a character. Mm, okay, okay. But okay, because from the t- from what we've seen of her, she's very confident. Like from the two times yeah. we've seen her, she was adamant that Rainbow doesn't join her because it's dangerous. I can do this alone. The second time was Rainbow, why did you bring this noob along? It's dangerous. And now she's like, uh I cause trouble. I feel depressed. Sadness is everywhere. So it's like eh. hopelessness. But could it be out of characterness or that we don't really know? From my description there, it sounded like she's out of character. Well, I think back to her in Quibble Pants where she said, I don't have time to worry about an upset fan. Mm-hmm. Which granted, there is a, a massive difference between a fan doesn't like my writing and I may have nearly killed someone. Big difference. Oh, true, 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 true. But still. But Daring, Daring, I feel like, would be a little bit more either how can I fix this or hang on, something screw is going on around here. Uh, yeah, I, I have to agree with, hang on, something screw is going on here. Let me investigate. Like, I think that's her, that should be her MO. Uh, but still, uh, we got what we got. Her mo is she? Uh, is she one of the Stooges? Oh nah, man, motis motif operandi, motis motis operandi. I love that you actually took me seriously with that question. <laughs> a brandy is a drink, Norman. Anywho, Pinky wants to stay the night because she ate all the muffins, and yeah, they do stay the night. Next morning, they go to the broken statue, and here is where the part that it feels. A bit hand fisted. Like it was forced in. So, in said town square where the statue was broken and destroyed, Rainbow Dash tries to plead for Daring Do's goodness and whatnot. It seems to work until she said that the statue was nothing, it didn't mean anything, until a old pony comes up and Tells the backstory of the legend of Sonambula. Um, to the silver, do you have anything to summarize with this one, or do you want me to do it? Well, let's see here. Let's let me just ponder for a sec. I don't have a song totally handy. Let's see here. Look, at, I'm just looking at the screenshots of the legend of Sonambula. Dang it! I want to do walk like an Egyptian, but I'm trying to remember how it started. Ding 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 ding. I think I've just we just have a Norman plan. Basically, what you got here is an ineffective monarchy in the extreme. It's like there's a giant sphinx. Of all the times you need a hero to murder something, <laughs> there's a giant sphinx. But right right now the theme is starve like an Egyptian pony because nobody gets to eat. Because some sort of a uh, terrible sphinx is eating all the food and keeping people impoverished, and so basically, Sonambula is the only one who does something nice for people, and the prince is all like, "Oh, hey, you can do that! I never knew. I never knew that." <laughs> and so the sphinx is all like, "Well, you can, but now I'm going to kidnap you." It's basically like, "Oh, roll reversal. Next, she's going to wake me with a kiss," and Sonambula's like, "No, nope, nope, you're not that hot." <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. But but you think about it, right? The prince here is kind of okay, I I don't like to call people dumb because nobody's really dumb. But the prince is dumb. Everybody's dumb and you know it. Uh but okay, but the prince here is dumb. It's not only once, 
but it's been proven twice now, right? Well, if you count the comics. Yes, yeah, I'm counting the comics because we- it shows there really well. <laughs> well, the Principu, he's into into Fifty Shades of Sphinx right now, <laughs> as he's tied to a pillar. And Sonambula has to get to him by wearing a blindfold. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm sensing a really disappointing movie coming out of oh, this. Boy. But <laughs> but I think you're skipping like, a... like the remake of the remake of the Mummy. Uh, that was disappointing. I think that was James's disappointing movie of last year. Yeah, he had to watch it four times. Wouldn't doubt, <laughs> wouldn't doubt it. I, I think you're missing a uh, missing a bunch here, Silver, because the prince got kidnapped and. Nobody was brave enough to save the prince. And the only pony that was brave enough is Sonambula. Oh, yeah. Where she has to wear a blindfold to be, and know the safe word. <laughs> no, man. No. You're missing a good chunk of it. It's I approve of this. <laughs> the, the challenge is walk across this terrible drawbridge no. blindfolded. <laughs> no, before. And if you do. Beforehand, beforehand, the, the Sphinx says, like, Yo, you want the prince back? Sure, but riddle me this. And said riddle was... Uh, what was the riddle again? Now I need to open up the... Here we go. Here we go. There, I've got the riddle. The riddle is, I shine brightest in the dark. I am here but cannot be seen. To have me cost you nothing, to be without me cost you everything. The sun. And the answer is a fetish. <laughs> no! Oh, 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 no. Cutter. no, it's hope. Yes, hope. And that is when Sonambula became the Barack Obama pose. <laughs> oh, God, no. Okay. Let, let me get things back on track. The best pony in that regard. Okay, let me get back on track. So, anywho, after Sonambula answered the question, which is hope, um, says Pink's be tripping, y'all, because she be raging and not being happy. Sonambula says, you know what? Since I answered that one too easily, I'll give you another one. Like, give me, give me another question. Like, I, I can take it. Give, give me one. Give me one. Or the Sphinx could have just said, you know, I'm a giant Sphinx. You're a little pony. Nom. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> but I think the Sphinx couldn't resist a challenge. So, said Sphinx says, you know what? I'm going to pick you. I'm going to take you up on it. All you have to do is cross the bridge to the prince and save him. But there's a catch. You are going to be blindfolded, and I have magics to make you not fly. By the way, um, Sominambula here is a pegasi, and she didn't flew once in the show. So, yeah. Maybe she's just got a little bit of Fluttershy aspect to her. True that. Just a little. True that, true that. And remember, the safe word is onomatopoeia. (laughs) That's going to be hard to say. But anywho, this thing pushes... Sonambula in the right track and says, Good luck! I hope you don't fall! <laughs> and yes, Sonambula crossed the bridge while being guided by said prince, who's probably saying this, Hey, listen! Hey, listen! Actually, why am I thinking, uh, what was that game, Nightmare? <laughs> Sp- Noah Antwerler did a video of it ages ago where kids had to navigate their friend oh, through a trap on his blindfold. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And if he fell over, it's like, ooh, nasty. What was it again? Oh, God. Oh, man, no, no. Thanks, Silver. Now I need to look it up because I have an OCD now. Nasty. <laughs> ah, what was it again? Oh, now I need to check. The... You know what? I can check it later. If you guys at home want to play along, you can check it out too. Uh, so, anywho, Sonambula succeeds and said Spinks be tripping and she says, I'll get you next time, Sonambula. <laughs> Except I promise to never leave again, which is honestly very honorable of me. Yes. And maybe a little bit naive on the pony's parts. I'm just going to go kill someone else. <laughs> yes. So, after saving the prince, Sonambula is rewarded with a emerald necklace? What would they call again? Ancient Egyptian rave sticks? <laughs> I wish. No. What was it again? No, glo- glow yeah, pads. Glow pads. It's, like, it's like topaz, but not but glow pads. Oh, God. They, oh, they even make up gym. Okay, well, you know what? I can, I can dig it. I can dig it. So, anywho, after the story was told, everybody is in good mood and 
Rainbow Dash says, Hey, that was awesome. Yeah, that was an awesome story. But still, the hooded pony says, Yeah, awesome story, bro. But still, nobody's going to fix our uh, statue to Sunambula. During duty to pay for it. And we still have to suffer through it. She's evil. 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 Uh, yes. So the whole townsfolk is mad. And A.K. Erling or Daring Do uh, walks off. And the crowd disperse. Rainbow Dash confronts said hooded pony and says like, Hey, why you be tripping, yo? Daring Do's not that bad. She's helped people. And hooded pony reveals himself to be Dr. Caballeron. <gasps> I didn't saw that coming from a mile away. It's like Miraculous Ladybug. Who would have thought that Marionette is Ladybug? Oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. I'd, I'm just impressed that we've discovered the hidden secret of uh, how to capture Rainbow Dash. Apparently, you just have to cover the screen so it's all black. <laughs> and then we pull away. Rainbow has forgotten the safe word. <laughs> what was it again? Onomatopoeia? Yeah, so she's probably mispronounced it. Onomatopoeia. Wikipedia. <laughs> Oh, wow. Near Automata? <laughs> uh, but anywho, Rainbow Dash. I'm on a double entendre. <laughs> so, if you want to get into this? This one. I ain't getting into nothing. <laughs> that's not a word. <laughs> oh, wow. That's going to be a beep. But anywho. Uh, the Sweetie Bot returns yes. with a vengeance. And, and then, pan over. And Pinkie Pie and Darren Dew are less than three yards away. Uh, and, and they're like, you want to jump to the rescue anytime soon? You want to dive into the... You want to save your friend who's being abducted and putting up a surprisingly minor amount of fight? Silver, silver, silver. The only reason why they didn't notice is they didn't pan the camera to the right. All I'm saying is... Let's look at this. Is, has there ever been a Daring Do story where someone didn't get tied up? I'm. I seriously think Fifty Shades of Dew is uh, very much possible. Oh my God, her mane is gray. <laughs> so wait, 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 Silver. What you're telling me is you got to do to do? I'm. I'm starting to wonder. <laughs> oh God. I'm starting to wonder. Maybe huh? she's into that, and maybe it's it's uh, applying to Rainbow as well. In which case, I'm not. I'm not one to judge, but what someone think of the children? <laughs> oh, but anyway, after Rainbow Dash got pulled away by Caballero and the gang, Pinkie Pie chases after them to save Rainbow Dash. And, well, cutscene away, we see Pinkie Pie getting really tired and trading behind her was Daring Do. And Pinkie Pie says, I knew you'd come. Daring says, how did you know? I just do. You don't question the pinky. So they discover where they've taken Rainbow Dash and it's to the Cursed Pyramid of Legends. And they see Rainbow Dash at one... Well, it's technically the same story, minus the bridge. Minus the bridge, which is kind of an important detail. Yeah, but I think it's the so bridge here was destroyed after Caballero got his whatever. You know, he... Well, the... Yeah. Yes, and, and good good on him. But here's the thing. Pinkie Pie's assertion is you just have to hope that something will happen. And I think that's the wrong definition of hope. Mm -hmm. Hope is a motivator. It, it gets you to act. When everyone else sees an end, you see possibility. The fact that Pinkie doesn't see the air vents, she just sort of assumes everything will work out, that's dangerously naive. True. That hope is not... Hope does not make you stupid. It may, it just makes you st stop believing the cynics who say they're smart for giving up. True, true. And I, I love your description there, Silver. It's perfect. But this in there... Besides... Oh, no, no. I, I am not done with my nitpickiness. You cannot stop me. Note that they are approaching Rainbow from the furthest point, where you could walk around <laughs> the pit... To the sides that are actually that are about one third the distance of where they're currently standing, and you could jump. You could jump, Silver. You I, uh, are four-legged bodies that can jump. It's Pinkie Pie. She can jump. 
so far. You could do so many things, so, but you they didn't. Can fly? No, no, they can't fly. They can't fly. Oh, they can't fly. Somehow the curse they, carries they on. The curse carries on, which I uh, believe me, a curse is a, is very much warranted in this situation. Mm-hmm. But Sweetie Bot won't let me. <laughs> so I just like. So Tinky I just. I can jump good. She yes, yeah, she jumped good. <laughs> jump good. And, Ray, and Rainbow Dash can jump good. So why are you doing this? You're smarter ponies than this. Okay, I, I, I'm on. looking at it here, and in all honesty. There's a huge gap between the pillar and the well the sides. It's uh, it's sizable, yeah, sizable, true. But one, if you use Rainbow Dash as a physical reference, I don't know actual point. It's it's about the length of two Rainbow Dashes. I, nah, man, nah, it, it's maybe three. It's perspective here. The pool here looks big and set location of where Rainbow Dash is could be probably in the middle. And yet, the sides are still very much closer than... appear very much closer I, than... Uh, and I don't think it's just perspective. I really do mean if you if you use Rainbow as a reference. I do think this rectangular pit is narrower on the sides. And you can jump, and it, it's even lower, so you're jumping from an advantage point. And, you know, okay, that is true, but at the same time, too, I have to disagree about the sides of the pool being closer to Rainbow Dash. Like, to me, it's perspective here, but hey, let's not argue about this be- because we could go... Oh, let's, let's, it's so much fun. <laughs> let there be blood. Let our argument flow from the streets. Let it run red and nitpicks. <laughs> Safi, yes. you, you're an artiste. Let's talk perspective. I want your perspective on this. I'll send me a link to the perspective because I'm not looking. Oh, give me a second then. <laughs> oh, give me a second then. Oh, oh. <clears throat> what is this? Just, uh, I, <laughs> I am doing my absolute darndy bestest to do this, and you're not even looking. It is very tilted, and it's messing with my eyes. I don't like <laughs> it. Uh, but still, uh, okay. You know what? We've, we've been harping on this for a while now, so I'm going to carry on. Uh, so after having the leap of fate, uh. Like I was saying, after having the leap of fate, Pinkie Pie and Daring Do managed to uh, approach upon Rainbow Dash. They untie her and they hop onto the other end. Now, Silver, if you want to nitpick here, I won't stop you because this one here is just even more confusing. All right. Which, what's the confusing after part? The that save, they jump back? Or... After the save. After... Because... The pillar here is sinking. So now, if you really think about it, the air pressure or whatever it is that they're hopping on wouldn't give them much lift. Oh, so now we can nitpick. Oh, Norman, I have your permission. You, you want to go? Go ahead, man. Like, yeah. I guess I've reached the point of, of, of brokenness. <laughs> it's like these they, these air vents appeared and they just hop around. And... They do look rather adorable mm-hmm. hopping between these mm-hmm. poofs. Adorableness goes a long way to making me overlook the nitpicks, but uh, basically, and I just want to echo Safi's sentiment, they jump good. Yeah, they jump good. They jump real good. They jump good. They jump good. And now that Dairy Do has rescued the damsel in distress, by classic law, they must now wed. Oh, no. Why not? Dairy do a Rainbow Dash, the new OTP. Uh, in all honesty, they're clones. But hey, who's counting? Before they wed, they have to f- stop Doctor Caballeron. So they hit. Wait, which ones? Which ones the clone though? There's the question. Re- Daring do. Are they? Daring do's the clone. Dar- oh, what if Rainbow Dash is a clone of Daring do? Or maybe they're clones of another pony. Turns out Rainbow was always a clone of Princess Celestia. Oh, no, <laughs> uh, crack ship. But anywho. Heading back to town, we see we get to see Dr. Caballero heading out of town, like getting out of Dodge. And they are stopped by Daring Do, who is surprised to see Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash safe. They drop the bag and reveal that they were the ones stealing the glow... What you will call it? Glorial? Glormoral? Uh, glow glow pass. pass, yes. 
they were the ones stealing the clothes. And in a very stupid way, he outed himself hard. And in the end, the townsfolk, well, I would say try to stone Caballeron alive, but nah, they escape. And they all apologized to Daring Do and said that, oh, she's a hero. Yay. And there was much rejoicing. Yay. <laughs> Yay. And once, uh, uh, <clears throat> and after that, after the celebration, Daring Do acknowledges her mistakes and, well, pay for all of the, whatchamacallit, this uh, damages she's done by paying, by, by replacing the fruit cart pony's fruit cart by paying the bill of the inn, and also by replacing the statue of Sonambula. And yeah, everybody's happy. So, yay. Much joy. Except Dr. Yay. Caballero. Uh, well, Caballero is going to get it no matter what. Oh yeah, he going to get it. I still can't quite recall if it was Caballero disguised the daring you that caused this. Nah. There's a line for Caballero. And with the destruction you leave in your wake, it didn't take too much to convince ponies you were a villain. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And so, yeah. Okay, so Darian is responsible for these damages, and I'm glad that she does restitution. Mm-hmm. And with that, episode ends. So let's head into our final thoughts and gripes, if we have any. So, Silver, what do you think of said episode? Well, like I say, there's sort of a... It's not bad, but at the same time, it doesn't invoke a lot of passion or celebration. All right, so I can now confirm Darian do did do... The done deed. Mm. Diddly. <laughs> but done diddly done. Done diddly done did do. Do did done diddly. <laughs> but uh, the fact that one, she's choosing to mope instead of act. I think that's the biggest disconnect I feel. That it's, it's natural to feel disappointed, maybe angry at yourself, but action, momentum, forwardness. This is the mark of a hero. Who, st- who strides forth and learns from the mistake. So having her just sort of be like, I give up. One bad thing happened, I give up. That doesn't sound like something Daring Do would do. True, true. Do the do. True, 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 true. And then Rainbow Dash, that confrontation with Cavaleron would involve a great deal more bruising and bo- broken hench ponies. Uh, except that for some reason, they just cover the screen and <clears throat> suddenly Rainbow is, is having that... Uh, yeah, it's not a daring do story until someone's tied up. <laughs> oh, blindfold. And I will say, I don't like the representation of hope as, in essence, blind faith. Hope is a motivator. Hope is married with action to aff- to affect change. It's not waiting for the universe to throw you a bone. True, true. And that's what I got to say. All right. All right. And Seppi, what about you? What about me? Any thoughts on... I already gave my thoughts. I I didn't pay attention to this episode <laughs> because the only thing I remembered was the character design of... What's her remember? face? Yeah, that girl. <laughs> All right, then. I can't <laughs> even remember her name and I dare not say it or else that Silver will take my words and then turn them around. <laughs> and... Oh, you know me so well. <laughs> oh, boys. I dare not pronounce her name. <laughs> <laughs> oh boys, but anywho. As for me, this episode was a fun watch. It wasn't the best of the season. <sighs> like Silver mentioned before, the characteristics of Daring Do were a bit off. Rainbow Dash and how she had to get tied up. If I'm not mistaken, this is her third time. Thank <laughs> you. If I'm not mistaken, this is her third time, right? Well, it's three times Rainbow Dash has worked with Daring Do yeah, now. And the first one, she didn't get tied up? Well, let's see. Daring Do got tied up in the first uh-huh. one. Then Rainbow got tied up in the second oh, yeah, one. Yeah. And now Rainbow got tied up again. So, it's... oh, but then there was the flashback of, of Daring Do when Rainbow was reading about her. And she got tied up there. So. Yeah, there's a lot of not T things happening. Oh, you're bound to determine to, to make that joke, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, yes. Um, the backstory of the pillars, uh, Selemida story here, is a really fun story of the legend here. But yeah, um, this Pinks was a fun design. There was a lot of fan art of her. And what else? Oh, 
in all honesty, it's a fun show, but it has its problems. The pit of green slime there was interesting. In all honesty, it was just green slime from Nickelodeon, but they didn't really want to tell us what it's made of, so yeah. Well, how do you know there isn't like a changeling underneath that they like have to milk for the slime? Oh, no. You. I just walked The Last Jedi. Believe me. Oh. I've seen worse. Oh. But anywho, but anywho. I have I have implanted the idea in your brain, oh, Norm. God. But any. It will never oh, leave. God, no. Uh, I need to bleach. But anywho, uh, like I mentioned before, this episode was harmless. It was a fun watch. You guys should go watch it. So anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? We're going to watch We Have a Mental Breakdown. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We're going to be talking about love is in the air, and so are arrows, and so are freaky little ladybug things that zip in and out of the screen and I, invade my personal space. Okay. Grab your popcorn, people. Okay. I, I, this is going to be a, uh, how, how would you say it, Silver? Hot topic issue. Madness. Madness yes, incarnate. it's going to be a maddening time. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have to... Uh, point out a few things here for the people at home or people who are listening to this right now. Um, okay, you're probably listening to this early on and a bit confused with the release schedule. And yeah, uh, the Ladybug thing is going to be premiering um, after Valentine's Day. So that will be on the 15th. And it's going to be all topsy-turvy and whatnot. It's going to be very confusing for the release thing. But hey, the NBA show is full of confusion. Trust me, I'm even confused with what we're doing right now. But Valentine's is Valentine's, so we need to do something. So anywho, that will be released on Valentine's? I don't know. Yeah. But anywho, that's next review. We're going to, you're going to listen to that. So yay. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Quill. I have been Sapphire Heart Song. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the S Show. See ya! The next Daring 2 story will be even more naughty. <laughs> bye bye! So, do you think there will be even more bondage in the next Daring 2 episode? Who knows? Daring 2 in the Temple of the Mystical. <laughs> oh, no! Sweetie Pot's gonna have a field trip. <laughs>